Welcome back to the channel. Getting over a new character after a mantle swap is always very difficult, especially in today's comic book market. When you introduce a new Batman named Jay's Fox, you put him in Gotham City. While Bruce Wayne is alive and well and still fighting crime, it makes it very difficult for that character in particular to stand out. Now, they have moved Jay's Fox over to New York City, so at least he has some distance between himself and Bruce Wayne, who's obviously still in Gotham and losing the city once again. How many times can we have that story arc? But they also put John Ridley on the title, and that's probably the biggest obstacle between Jay's Fox just being another also ran mantle swap character that's very unsuccessful and actually making a name for himself and establishing himself as another alternative to Batman in the DC Comics universe. That has not happened because John Ridley, quite frankly, is not a very good comic book writer. And I think that all comes down to the fact that he does not like superheroes and he does come to these stories from a very narrow perspective and he uses talking points and language that each and every one of us can see every single day on Twitter. You never actually hear Jace Fox sound like a hero. He never talks about the situations that he's dealing with in an interesting manner. It's always these really stupid talking points that are lifted directly out of like Twitter and stupid Reddit forums and stuff like that. It makes the character very unengaging. He doesn't sound heroic. And quite frankly, a lot of these talking points and buzzwords are a real big turnoff just to normal people. Even people that agree with John Ridley's perspective that he's trying to get over with this character, Jace Fox, they're tired of hearing it put that way. They're tired of hearing it from the mouths of 40-year-old women from Connecticut. People come to the DC Comics universe to experience heroic storytelling, to see things from the hero's perspective, and we never really get that. And in this latest issue, I Am Batman number 14, it gets even worse. You can't take Jace Fox seriously or even root for him as a superhero in the DC Comics universe after what he does at the end of this issue. And I imagine those are some of the many reasons why I Am Batman is a sales loser for DC Comics. Batman is the flagship title, not just the number one selling comic book title in the entire industry. It's literally the character that's keeping DC Comics afloat right now. They've destroyed so many heroes, but Batman continues to sell and almost everything related to Batman sells. But I Am Batman does not sell. Barely sitting inside the top 150 the last time we saw the sales rankings. At this point, it's safe to say the Jace Fox experiment at DC Comics is an enormous failure. Nobody is reading the title. Not many people are enjoying it. And no one cares about it, despite having Batman in the title itself. That is almost a surefire way to sell a comic book in today's market. I can't believe John Ridley and DC Comics okayed this to happen in the pages of a Batman comic book. It all spawns out of this conversation between this character Whitaker and Jace Fox. One thing you will notice in here is there's a great outline around Whitaker. I've heard two competing theories on this. One states that this character is controlled by the great darkness and is part of Dark Crisis, and that's why he's got the yellow outline. That doesn't make sense to me. Everyone we've seen controlled by the great darkness in Dark Crisis has chains across their chest. So I don't know how that works here. There is another theory that I'm gonna get to here in a second, which makes a little bit more sense on the next page of art. This is the conversation that essentially breaks Jace Fox and why he can no longer be a hero. Were you just scared if you didn't call yourself Batman, nobody would take you seriously? If you knew the whole story, there's a, a connection to the other. Hey, nobody's trying to hear that. Honestly, all anybody cares about, when things get real, you tend to run. You ran from Gotham to New York. This whole dark crisis thing, you ran from that. You ran because you're scared. Why don't you shut up Whitaker? So I'm asking, why Batman? Why ruin his rep just because you're a straight up coward? Shut your... And then he proceeds to beat him within an inch of death with a baton. Here's the other theory of why this character is outlined in yellow, and you will see Jace Fox is also outlined in yellow in this panel. There is a streetlight that has the exact same hue as those yellows. Perhaps the yellow outline just indicates that the character was under the street lamp. Besides that, Jace Fox takes a baton and just starts pummeling this man for calling him a coward. Can you imagine if when you watch Back to the Future, when Biff called Marty and his dad a chicken, they brandished a weapon and beat him within an inch of his life. Would you be able to consider Marty McFly a hero after that? Even though he was provoked, he was called a chicken, and it certainly upset him, but he never actually tried to kill anybody. And here, clearly, Jace Fox is trying to murder this man for calling him a coward. Not exactly the nicest thing in the world but not exactly the biggest provocation in the world either, especially if you want to call yourself Batman. Now, there is that first theory that we still have to consider. Perhaps this has something to do with Dark Crisis. We do know that the next issue will tie into that. But if that is the case, 
DC Comics editorial have done a terrible job explaining this, and it just appears that Jace Fox decided to murder somebody for calling him a name and calling him out a little bit about being a coward in New York City. DC Comics is all about painting their characters with the worst stereotypes possible. I guess now Jace Fox is an angry black man that will murder somebody at the drop of a hat. Jace Fox is already an enormous failure at DC Comics, and in my opinion, it's pretty much all John Reilly's fault. He's had two years to differentiate this character from Bruce Wayne Batman. As far as I can tell, the only thing that makes him different than Bruce Wayne is that he doesn't like Bruce Wayne, and that's why he's Batman, and he wants to prove that he's a better version of Batman. Not exactly a compelling reason to become a superhero, but that is a compelling reason and certainly something that we've seen in the history of comic books themselves to become a super villain. And after this issue of I Am Batman, it's hard not to see Jace Fox in that light. He's a villain. He's just beating people up and trying to murder them because they insulted him just a tiny bit. And let's not forget just how bad this comic book is. When I stopped reading I Am Batman, and I think it's been almost a year at this point, they were investigating the murder of anarchy. I've come back a year later, and they just now solved the murder in the most boring, lame-ass way possible. Jace Fox is standing there with the question. They're talking to some protesters that were working with Anarchy to investigate the murder of Danny Ched. They find out that he was an informant for the police. The lead protester asked, well, then who killed him? And they said, well, you did. And he goes, well, I guess you got me. Now we're going to kill you. And then they beat him up. That was the big payoff to a year-long story or mystery in I Am Batman. Just terrible writing. And I mentioned the dialogue and the perspective and the fact that John really cannot separate Jace Fox from like Twitter speak at this point. During the confrontation, the protester calls him out and listen to this cringy ass dialogue, which permeates throughout this entire comic book. You little piece of, you were supposed to be one of us, but you're just like the police and the oppressor. If you were a real hero, you'd fight the power. Instead, you're just there. I imagine we all know how he ended that sentence. And that's supposed to lead to this big crisis of conscience for Jace Fox. Is he just another oppressor of the people? I guess having murderers directly question your intentions and who you're fighting for is really going to affect a superhero in the DC Comics universe. Just ridiculous stuff. And John really thinks he's really deep here. That's the worst part about it. He thinks he's going places that we've never experienced before. And it gets worse because Jace Fox is questioning himself now. So he has to have this stupid conversation with the question herself. This is what she has to say. Good and bad, black and white, easy and obvious. When you're fighting bias, bigotry, and human nature, there's gray, nothing but gray. And I hate to tell you this, but it only gets grayer. I have to go, Batman. Thanks for helping. At least tell me, did I pass the test? You weren't the one being tested. This is the kind of cringy tripe that passes for deep dialogue at DC Comics now. And this isn't isolated to Jace Fox trying to be Batman in New York City. This is all over Marvel and DC, and it's so tiring, it's so off-putting. I imagine if you asked John Ridley, he would say, well, this comic book actually isn't written for you. Well, if you're not writing comic books for comic book readers, then who are you writing it for? That phantom audience that has never come over the past five years as you've been courting them every single month? These phantom readers have had like 120 months straight to come over and discover these wonderful stories written specifically for them. But guess what? They don't want to read them either. They don't like cringy tripe dialogue either. Even the people that agree with John Ridley and his point of view in this comic book, when they read it, they roll their eyes. They find it off-putting because they're tired of hearing about the same old conversation verbatim from the exact same point of view. Do something interesting with the character. If you want to tackle these issues, do it in a way that makes sense for the character that's going to be engaging, that's going to be different. That isn't something I can experience for free on Twitter. That's why the character's not getting over. There's nothing that differentiates Jace Fox from a 45-year-old liberal woman from Minnesota. That's a problem for DC Comics and the authenticity of Jace Fox and what he's trying to say in these comic books. And it gets worse because I guess now his sister is a new version of Robin for this fake version of Batman. Great, we got another fake Robin character in the DC Comics universe. She has a conversation with a young gang initiate this young lady that has a gun and she's supposed to steal money. And it's so bad the way that it's put out there. John Ridley has no feel for character or dialogue or any of that stuff. He is not a comic book writer. This is the worst speech in this comic book, worse than what the question just said to Jace Fox. The gang member says, who the hell are you? I am she who puts foot in ass. 
I am she who delivers beatdowns on punks. Yeah, I am her. This is supposed to be a big dramatic moment where she's finally a hero now. And it's so laughably cringy that all you can do is wonder how this ever made it through. After this, a police officer that we've seen in I Am Batman for two years now, her name is Chubb, tries to stop her. And rather than using her cutting and guile to get away from the police officer, she actually decides to fight her. This character is not a hero either. There are many reasons I Am Batman was destined to fail as a title on DC Comics. It was a fake Batman. It was another mantle swap. It was yet another obvious attempt to incorporate more diversity in the DC Comics universe. And there are plenty of black heroes in the DC Comics universe that get no spotlight whatsoever. But they decided they needed to make this character important, call him Batman, and then put John Ridley on the book. John Ridley is the reason this thing cannot sell. He's not a good storyteller. He's absolutely terrible. Mantle swaps are hard to do in today's comic book industry, and they're failing across the line because every time they do this, they always focus on the surface traits in representative areas of the character rather than the heroics, rather than what makes them special in the universes that they're functioning in. I've actually talked about this, and the sales map it out. Mantle swap characters do not sell at Marvel. They don't sell at DC. They fail across the line. If you want more proof, you need to watch this video. If you don't see it here, there's also a link in the video description.